Hey gang, uh, in this section we're going to use what uh, we know about base rate and amount to solve various percent applications. Um, let's jump right in. Okay, let's talk about money a little bit. Um, one of the most fundamental places where percentages show up are in calculating uh, markup values. So when a shop or a retail store buys parts, what they pay for it is called our cost. Um, you don't get to buy it for cost typically because they need to make some profit on that. And so the amount that they add to that price is called their markup. And that's usually given as a percentage. That markup is what allows the shop or store to make some profit. And that total value that they turn around and sell it to you for uh, is called retail. So let's do an example. Um, we know that the cost of the item plus what the store or shop adds on gives us a total of the retail price. Let's use that information to figure out the retail price for this battery. Um, shop pays $75.70 for an 84-month battery. They're going to use a 40% markup. And what is the retail price? Well, we're going to start by noting that $75.70, that's our starting value. And our starting value is always the base, anytime something is changing. So now we're going to add 40% onto that. 40% must be our rate. And from our work in the last section, we know that amount can be found by taking the base times the rate. And so in this case, that means that the amount that it's going to get marked up is $75.70 times the rate. But again, that has to be in decimal form, so we're going to call that 0 0.40. And 75.70 times 0 0.40 is $30.28. Now, that doesn't answer our question, but that is the amount of our markup. So the retail price then is going to be the cost, which the shop paid for it, $75.70, plus the amount they're marking it up, $30.28, for a grand total of $105.98. Okay, you give this one a try. Determine the total price with a 5% sales tax of a water pump. The parts supplier pays $62.50 for the pump, but they're going to add a 30% markup. But all water pumps are on sale for 10% off. So that's similar to the problem we did, but it's a little bit more involved. You're going to start with your $62.50, add on your 30% markup, then take off the 10% discount, and then add on 5.5% sales tax. Go ahead and give that a shot at several steps, but we'll work through it when you unpause the video. Okay, so again, what we start with is always our base. And so our base is going to be 6250. We're going to take that 6250 and multiply it by our rate, which uh, in this case is 30%, which we're going to write as 0 0.30. And when we multiply those together, that'll give us the amount of the markup. And that turns out to be $18.75. So if we take our original $62.50, which is what the shop paid for it, and add on this $18.75 in markup, we get $81.25. And that's our retail price. But we are told that there's a discount here, so we're going to take that 81.25, and that becomes the base for the next part of our problem. So now we're going to take our base of 81.25, and we're going to multiply that by our new rate, our discount rate, which is 10%. And that turns out to be $8.13 when we round it off to the nearest penny. That's the amount of our discount. So that's how much we're going to save due to the sale. So this time, instead of adding on, we're going to subtract that off. The retail price of $81.25 is going to be reduced by $8.13. And when we do that, we're going to be left with $73.12. And that's our sale price. Now, that becomes the base for the sales tax. We now need to add sales tax onto that. So part three is to take that $73.12, that's our base, and we're going to multiply it by our sales tax rate, which is 5.5%, decimal two places to the left, and that becomes 0 
and when we multiply that we'll get the amount of tax. That turns out to be four dollars and two cents. So now we're going to repeat this one more time. So the sale price of that uh, water pump is $73.12. And we're going to add on $4.02 for tax. And so the answer to our question turns out to be $77.14. A lot of steps there. A common mistake is to combine all those percentages in the beginning and say, oh, a 30% markup minus 10% off is a 20% markup, and that doesn't work because our base is changing at each step. Okay, if you've ever been to Harbor Freight Tools here in town, you know that uh, you can always get online a 20% off coupon to use for any single item in the store. Um, but sometimes that's not the best deal. Sometimes they have coupons for items in the store that are a better deal. So I've got three items here, and for each one, um, we're going to take the regular price and figure out if it's better to use the 20% coupon uh, or the, uh, the items coupon. So let's start with the first one on the left here. Uh, we've got a tool cabinet. It's regularly $299.99 and it's on sale for $279.99. Should we use that coupon or should we pay the $299.99 and use 20% off? Well, uh, the regular price, the original value, $299.99, that's our base. And we're going to multiply that by our rate, which of course here is 20% or 0 0.20. And if you do that, that turns out to be a, an even $60. So that means, and you can kind of see the answer to this one, if we take our $299.99 cabinet and subtract off $60 for that 20% off coupon, we would only be paying $239.99, which is certainly a better deal than the coupon uh, that they're offering at $279.99. So here, we would use the 20% off coupon. For the second one, we've got a folder, a folding miter saw stand. Um, it shows that the regular price on that is $64.99, uh, and this coupon will get it to you for $49.99. Should we use that coupon, or should we start with $64.99 and use the 20% off coupon there? What does that work out to be? Well, uh, here we go again. Our base, the original value, is $64.99. And if we multiply that by our rate, which is 20% or 0 0.20, that turns out to be $13. And so if we use the 20% off coupon here, we would be paying $64.99 minus the $13. That would leave us with $51.99. Okay, that's not bad, but uh, the coupon they're offering us is for $49.99. So actually, that's the better deal this time. This time we should use the $49.99 coupon. It's the better deal. Okay, and I want you to take a minute and do this last one. Uh, this miter saw stand, uh, a different one, is $124.99. Must be a little heavier duty. And you can get the coupon for $99.99. Should you use this coupon or should you use the 20% coupon here? Go ahead and compute that and we'll work through the solution when you unpause the video. Okay, well our base here is $124.99. And if we take 20% off of that, we multiply it by our rate of 20% or 0 0.20. That turns out to be an even $25. And so if we take $124.99 and subtract off $25, that leaves us with $99.99 which, of course, is uh, the same price they're offering to us uh, for that uh, item-specific coupon. And so in this one, we could use either coupon, and it turns out to be exactly the same, $99.99. Okay, uh, one of the places where uh, in the shop where percentage shows up is um, when you're doing a compression test. A rule of thumb uh, for many internal combustion engines is that uh, the cylinder should all be within 15%. That is to say... The cylinder with the highest pressure is probably the one that's in the best shape. That is our base. And we want to know if all the other cylinders have pressures that are within 15% of that. So in this problem, that means that our base is going to be the 
cylinder with the highest pressure and it looks like that's 170 psi so to find the amount that we can vary we'll take the base times our rate and that means that our amount is going to be 170 psi times 15 percent 0 0.15 and that gives you 25.5 psi now that means that's how much we can vary we can be that much uh, lower than 170 so our minimum then would be 170 we know we won't have any above that that's our best one we can go down 25.5 psi and that leaves us at 144.5 psi so that's our minimum now we can take a look at our uh, values and uh, it looks like we've got one that's too low there 140 psi is too low and so the question is are the four pressures taken from the four cylinder acceptable uh, no they are not acceptable there must be something wrong uh, probably something wrong with this engine I'm gonna have to do some further investigation okay another nice simple uh, application of a percentage is uh, weight distribution so you'll often see ratios given like this one and these are percentages even though there's no percent sign there so the weight distribution for a vehicle is always given as the ratio of the front to the rear so this vehicle that's shown has a 54 46 weight distribution that means that the front has 54 percent of the weight because of the engine it's a little heavier and the rear holds 46 percent of the weight so we are told here that the total vehicle weight is 2350 pounds that's a pretty light little car that's our base that is the entire weight so we can verify the values that are uh, shown for this car the math is already done but we want to see that that's uh, that they're accurate so if our base is 2350 pounds let's go to the front and again the ratios are always given as front to rear so our front holds 54 percent of the weight so the amount on the front is going to be 2350 pounds times uh, the front's percentage of 54 percent that's 0 0.54 and if you multiply that out that turns out to be 1269 pounds which is shown now the rear is the other 46 percent those have to add up to 100 because all the weight is somewhere and so the amount there is 2350 times 0 0.46 and that turns out to be 1081 pounds now it should make sense but if we add those two weights together and combine them you end up with the total weight of the vehicle which is 2350 pounds and that's sort of a check to make sure that we've done all of our calculations correct okay let's take a look at just a few more here this is a tricky problem you buy an air compressor on clearance for 804.85 and that's not full price that's 30 percent off the regular price what was the original price well it's really tempting to take 804.85 and add 30 percent onto that but that won't give us our original price 30 percent of 80485 isn't how much we're saving it's 30 percent of the original price which we don't know think about it this way we don't know what the original price of this compressor is but we do know that if we paid full price we'd be paying hundred percent now we also know that they drop the price by 30 percent and that leaves us with our sale price And our sale price is 804.85 but here's the key we don't know the base in this problem the base was the original price when you don't know the base we have to be very careful with our rate 30 percent is not our rate here because the 804.85 isn't how much we're saving it's how much we're still paying so what percentage are we still paying we're paying 70 percent of full price that's our rate and the 80485 that's the amount that we're paying so we know our amount we know our rate we're looking for our base and from our relationship between amount base and rate we know that if we want to calculate the base we want to find the original amount we should divide the amount by the rate 
So in this case, that means we're going to take the amount that we're paying, 804.85, and we're going to divide it by our rate, which is not 30%. 30% is how much we're saving. What matters is how much we're paying, and we are paying 70%. So our rate is 0 0.70. And when you do that, you get 1,149.79. And we're done. Now, we could check that. We could take 1149.79 and take 30% off of that, and we better be left with 804.85. Uh, and it would work out, but we'll, uh, we'll stop there. Now, that's a tricky problem, and what makes it tricky is the fact that the base was our unknown value. Anytime your base is unknown, be real careful about how you're choosing your rate. And in fact, I'm going to give you one to try and solve here. How much should this part store charge for an engine hoist if they want the total price, with tax included, to be exactly $250? See if you can figure out um, what the base is in that problem. Unpause the video when you're ready to see that solution. Okay, well, this is similar to the last problem in that we don't know what the original price is. In the last problem, we didn't know the original price, but we do know what it dropped to. Here, we don't know the original price, but we do know what it's going to climb to. When we add on the sales tax, we should end up at an even $250. And how much did we go up? We know that we're going up 5.5%. The last problem, we dropped 30%, but here we're adding on 5.5%. So our base is our unknown. $250, that's the amount that we're having to pay. And our rate is going to be the 100% for the that we have to pay for the uh, engine hoist plus the tax, 5.5%. And so our rate here is a total of 105.5%. And so now we can solve it uh, similar to our previous problem. I won't write the wheel here again, but it's still true that base is amount divided by rate. So in our case, that means we're going to take the amount of $250 and divide it by our rate, which is 105.5%. Two places to the left is 1.055. And that leaves us with 236.97. And again, we could check that by calculating that amount times one point uh, times 0 0.055 sales tax and adding it on. We should end up at 250, and we would, but we'll stop there. And again, this problem is a particular tricky one, and the reason is because we did not know the base. Be real careful when you uh, don't know the base. Okay, here's an example of how the numbers can get kind of wacky um, and how you need to be careful about how you're assessing what your base race, rate and amount are. Suppose you buy a 1973 F-150, super sharp old truck. You buy it for $1,500. You spend $1,800 restoring it, fixing it up, and then you sell it for $6,800. What is your percent profit? Well, what is the base in this problem? That is to say, what did we start with? Well, the base would be how much you had to spend to uh, to get the truck and get it fixed up. So it's not just the 1500 that you've paid for the truck. It's the 1500 plus the 1800 you put into it. So in other words, in order to make money here, you spent $3,300. That's our base. Base is always the beginning amount when something's going to change. Now, um, what's our rate? Well, we don't know the rate, right? We're trying to find what our percent profit is. So since we're looking for a percent, our rate is unknown. And that means we need to figure out the amount. So the amount isn't the amount we sold it for. It would be the amount of profit. Since we're trying to find the percent profit, we want to find the amount of the profit. So the amount of profit is the $6,800 that we, uh, that we got in our sale minus the $3,300 we put into it. And that means we made $3,500. Now think about that. We spent $3,300, but then we made $3,500.
that we means we made a little bit more than we spent, we should get a rate of a little over 100% here. 100% profit would mean we doubled our money. So we can use our wheel here. To find rate, we're going to divide amount by base. And so in our case, the amount is 3,500 divided by a base of 3,300. And when we do that, we get 1.06. Now that's our rate, but remember our rate is always in decimal form when we use this relationship. So we would say that we have 106% profit, which again, 100% profit would mean we doubled our money. We did a little bit better than that, so we have a little bit more than 100% profit. Okay, as a technician, one of the common things uh, that um, vehicle owners complain about is dramatic drops in gas mileage. So it's important for you to be able to accurately cal calculate fuel economy um, so that you can uh, verify your customer's claims. So there's a problem like this in your practice problems, and you'll see one like this on your skill check. Uh, several steps to this problem. Let's work through it. Suppose you drive 316 miles and you use 15.4 gallons of gas. Um, let's figure out our gas mileage. Well, in order to figure out our miles per gallon, we'll just take the number of miles we drive, 316 miles, and divide it by our fuel use, which is 15.4 gallons. That's just to calculate a problem. And that turns out to be 20.5 and those are miles over gallons. This is a unit rate. Uh, hopefully that seems familiar, so we need to keep our units on there. That's miles per gallon, or MPG. Now we get an injector that gets clogged, and we can only drive 241 miles, not nearly as far, but we're using almost as much gas on 14.6 gallons. Our fuel economy is definitely going to drop. And if we divide that out, we end up with just 16.5 miles per gallon. So definitely our fuel economy is uh, not so good. If a customer were to complain that they noticed a drop, they'd be right. So then the question is, what is the percent decrease in your fuel economy? Well, because we're looking for a percent, that means that we, uh, we're looking for the rate in this relationship. And we know from our uh, wheel that rate is found by taking amount over base. So what are the amount in the base? That's the question. Well, the base is what we start with. The base is always uh, what we begin at. And so the 20.5 miles per gallon, that has to be our base. That's our normal full fuel economy. And the amount, that's a little bit more tricky. It's tempting to say 16.5 is the amount, but it's not. We're trying to find percent decrease, and so if we're trying to find percent decrease, then the amount has to be the amount of the decrease. And so our decrease here is 20.5 down to 16.5. We lose 4 miles per gallon. That is our amount of decrease. And so our amount here is 4.0. So we lose 4 miles per gallon when we should normally be getting 20.5 miles per gallon. And that turns out to be 0 0.195. If we turn that into a percentage, that's 19.5% drop in our fuel economy. That's big. But again, the thing I want to emphasize here is um, our original value, what we normally get is our base. And the change between the two, that's what gives us our amount. A common mistake is to call the other number the amount, but it's the difference between the two that gives us the amount of our decrease, and that allows us to calculate the percentage of our decrease. Okay, well, there's a lot more that we could do with percent, but the goal of this class is to get you a good, firm uh, working knowledge um, of everything you need for the industry, and so that's really enough to get you rolling. So uh, we'll move on to our next topic in the next lesson. Uh, make sure to reach out to me if you had any trouble with these questions. Some of these are uh, tricky, uh, and so there's no shame in uh, letting me know, and I'll certainly help you through any of your practice problems that you're having trouble with. Um, we'll see you in the next lesson.